Comic Fam. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm your host, Comic Tom. I'm sitting here with the Golden Age Guru, Jeff. What up, guys? Great to be here after Turkey Day. I'm excited to get behind the mic, and we got some great stuff to discuss. Did you eat some turkey? I had a lot of turkey. How much turkey did you eat? I actually should have had more, actually, now I think about it, because I had one really big plate that satisfied me for a long period of time, and then it was time to go, and I got hungry, because I ate too early and made a big mistake not coming back in time, and then it was time to go. You made a little pause there, and you're like, you know what? Hmm. Come to think about it, I didn't eat enough turkey. <laughs> no, it's true, because I thought about it again. I was like, you know what? Usually I eat plenty, and then I remember getting home, and my kids, same. They were just all, we were all hungry, because we waited too long, and then it was time to go, and we didn't get our second round of food. Well, you know what? I'm always into the yams with marshmallows, so That's I try to make a bunch of it, and then we. the trick is you don't bring it out with the main dish, because then everyone eats it. What you have to do is you bring it out after the fact, in between dessert, and then no one wants it, because they're waiting for dessert, and then you get to keep the whole plate in the fridge for the rest of the week. So your Thanksgiving jam is your yam. Yeah. Okay, and I have never been the marshmallow yam guy. I like more of the proteins. I like my stuffing. Uh, love the mashed potatoes and more of the starches and sides like that. But uh, the yam stuff, man, it just it doesn't... Doesn't get you? Never gets me, man. All never right. gets me. Well, you know what? We're not just talking about turkeys today because, you know, we make this podcast every single week. Hit the subscribe button. We talk a lot about comic book news and content in general. And we got a packed list for you to cover today. We're actually going to be following up your story about your stolen comic books today. There was actually a bunch of stuff that happened this last couple weeks. Yeah. And it's, uh, I wish it was better, but we did make some headway, but I got, dude, don't be modest right now. You're pissed. You're freaking mad. You're going to get heated. You're going to let it out. I will get heated. It's true. And the community came in strong. They're part of this. This I, is a, a a whole thing. It's gonna be great. I can't start heated. I'm gonna. If I'm heated, we'll this get you there. Show. If I, I don't get, get you to heated by this point, <laughs> there's something wrong. We're also touching on pedigree comics. You got some dope ones that you brought. I have a mail call here that I've been excited about since New York. Oh my goodness. Let's just jump right into it with Christmas comic books. We all know what's around the corner, right? So does Key Collector because now you can actually look up by Christmas, like topics, covers on the app. I mean, you already know how how thorough this app is. So now the holidays are around, you want to see what's a a seasonal comic, you can look it up. And just one in particular I looked up was Famous Funnies number five. It's the first time Santa's depicted on a comic format. And that came out in 1934. And then you found one as well that was really interesting. Yeah, that's right. One of my all-time favorite Batman covers, it's actually a Mr. Freeze cover, is from Batman Adventures, the holiday special. And it's listed as one of the all-time best Mr. Freeze stories. There's also a backup story with Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn, known as one of the best stories with them as well. This actually won a Harvey Award, and it's fantastic. It's a $25 issue book on like the high end. It sells all year round, and that's why I wanted to mention this particular category. And if you're looking for this category, I wanted to mention it today Because it's not on the home screen of the app. You're not going to find this on the home screen of the button. Nick's probably going, why are you talking about the Christmas category? I'm updating it this month right now. No, I want to inform the community that if you hit the additional button tab on the home screen, there is a category button right there. The buttons that are on the homepage are a small percentage of the category comic books. You click that additional button, hit the category section. There is a list a fat list, a searchable list. Before we jump ship on this topic, I want to mention one more book on this list that I really love because A, the artist Neil Adams in his prime is Batman 239. You got Batman knocking on a door and on the other side of the door is this little girl having a horrible Christmas. And then you got Batman with this big old Santa ho 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 beard. It's huge. And a big sack full of toys and he's knocking on this door. He's going to make some kid happy and it's just a great cover. Great cover for the season. All right, let's jump into the next subject of the show. We have Pawn Stars. All right, I know there's a story about an Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man, a purchase that you made from the Las Vegas pawn shop, the famous televised pawn shop. This was back in 2013. I just happened to be in Vegas. And um, I guess they filmed an episode where they had a Spider-Man 1 and an AF-15 on it. Okay, I didn't know about it. I just went to check out A because it's Pawn Stars. You're in Vegas. Let's go check it out. In 2013, reality TV was pretty darn hot. 
And I go out there, and sure enough, I ask them if they have any comics. And they have a Spidey one, and they have 15. Do you, what, do you think it was those particular comics from the show? It was, because they came with a letter on the back that said it's on the show, and this episode. Okay, I didn't know that part. I've seen that episode. Didn't realize this is the same comic comic book that you got. So that's the book that you bought? I mean, they've, been, they've had, I think, a few A15s since. But this was back, like I said, in 2013 already. So it's been a while. So I'm not sure which one you're, you're talking about. But they've had a few. But this was... This was one because that's what they told me, and it had some paperwork and documentation. And the price on the Spider Man was like, it was nuts. Like, how nuts? Like, market may have been like 4K, and they wanted 8K. Oh, double. Okay. Yeah. And then the AF 15 at the time they wanted was like a great deal. So I don't know if they messed up on their pricing because they looked a little confused when I was asking about the books, and somebody had to yell across the room, What do we got on this book? What do we have on this one? So. The price was 5K on the AF-15. 2013, if you're thinking about it, that's where it was in AF-15. And this is probably, I think it was maybe a 4.0, 3.0 to 4.0 at the time. So it was sounding like a pretty good deal. And instantly I asked him, well, can you do any better? And right away he dropped it a grand. Like it went from 5K to 4K. Whoa. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll take it. So I'll come back here. and you guess they wanted, take yeah, it. <laughs> they wanted cash. So I had to go back, get some cash. And so I did that, and I came back, I got the AF-15, it was on the show, sold it, I think I doubled plus my money on it, I mean, it was, it was a good purchase, man, and I, I didn't expect it, I figured a Pawn Stars are on TV, it's, everything's going to be overpriced, it's like a tourist trap, and I don't know if they just messed up their numbers, because that Spidey was crazy in the number one. So I wanted to highlight this today, because although there are a number of different occasions that Pawn Stars has featured comic books in the past... They've gotten better. You have to imagine that over a decade with television and the increased amount of specialists that they feature on the show now, that those price mistakes maybe or maybe undervaluing probably happens a lot less and less. And I'm bringing this up today because we have a good friend in the comic book community, Steve from Torpedo Comics. This is their lead grader over there. He is going to be featured on the show. Yeah, he's their comic guy now. Like when I was when I bought that book, it was like a guy who owned a toy store and did comics too. From what I remember watching on the show, but and then they like you said they've changed. They brought in specialists, but Steve, man, he is gonna turn it up, dude. He's about to pop on TV. It's gonna be crazy. This guy, he's got more charisma than I can describe on camera, and his accent, people are gonna love it across the country. They absolutely will. And then his enthusiasm is going to translate and you're going to feel it because when he talks about comics, he knows because he loves his books and he'll go through his personal. He'll talk about pages on interior stories. He'll recall everything. That dude bleeds ink, dude. He really does. He's awesome. It's the super nerd on Instagram. We're going to put the link to his Instagram in the description below because I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of members in the community who watch Pawn Stars. I watch the show from time to time. And I know people are going to watch this show and they're going to go, oh my gosh, first off, Torpedo Comics, where are they at? Shout out. In John Vegas. D. In Vegas, probably down the damn street. It's going to be convenient for him. And they're going to be like, Steve, heck yeah. And he's going to get so many people into comics. It's going to be crazy. I hope they don't edit him at all. The show's not that long, man. <laughs> he would talk <laughs> the entire show. Oh my gosh. I Congrats, hope we get some Steve. Eternals in there. Yeah, but that dude talking about Celestials. Okay. Moving on to the next part of the show. We're talking about pedigrees. Jeff, you brought two amazing pedigrees here just to show me. You're like, dude, these came in. You were excited. I'm like, oh, dude, I've heard about these type of books. And then I thought, no, 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 no. We got to take this conversation to the mic because these are special, special comic books. All right, for the audio fam, let's describe what we're holding here. Just give me one of them. We have Cannonball, Golden Age comic books from 1945. This was a short run. It was only a two-issue series. Okay, these are the two highest graded copies. The highest. The highest graded copies. How do you know that these are the highest graded copies? So you can check CGC, the comic, a comic grading company. Okay, not saying that that's not what it stands for, but it's a comic grading company. They keep a census of all the books they've graded. These are on the census, and they are the highest of them. It says 8.5 for number one and a 7.5 for number two. Number two has got a great devil uh, cover there. And number one has got a great classic skull cover to it. And this kid, who is the crash kid, 
Yeah, let's describe this comic book. We have Crash Kid. He kind of looks like a, almost a Robin figure, a little slender. And there's a car, a taxi on my copy of, I'm looking at issue number two, and he's outside of the car and he's gunning for what looks like Lucifer. Why is he gunning out of the car? Crash Kid's alter ego, or who he really is, is Rusty Adams. He works as a copy boy for a newspaper company. He doesn't have superpowers, correct? No powers. But he hates gangsters and violence. Dude, he hates gangdom. Yes, we just said gangdom. Get your mind out of the gutter, okay? Gangdom. So for him to thwart gangdom, he drives a car into gangsters' hideouts and crashes it. That's what he does. He's a superhero. He's like, oh, you need me to help you out? On my way. And he just crashes a car right into the heart of the gang. So as you can imagine, this tile didn't last very long. <laughs> it went two issues, but it's pretty, it's pretty dope, dude, because there's something a little bit more interesting about these particular comics. Because we mentioned, aside from them being the highest graded, these are pedigrees. There's a D on these comics in pencil. So when we say pedigree, pedigree is a recognized collection by CGC and other grading companies potentially, but we're just going to focus on CGC. And they will note that on their label. Some collections are renowned, thus making the particular comics that they're from more valuable. They tend to garner more value as they become a recognized and more sought-after collectible because it's a story behind these versions of the comic. And the story behind this is this was a 13,000 book collection. 2,000 of these books were stolen from the gentleman's house before they were ever recognized. This is the Davis Crippen D copy collection. And the thing about this collection that you can recognize is there's a letter D and a code on the interior of the cover. Yeah, this gentleman actually wrote in pencil a D to signify that it was his own. And sometimes, you know, in the collector's market, when there's markings on the cover, even signatures to some collectors are an abomination to the cover. But in this case, this D makes these comics extra sought after. And that's exactly correct because in order to recognize a pedigree, there generally has to be some type of markings that were left behind. Yeah, how do you know this came from that particular collection? Right. So unless it was all found at once and all graded at once, but that's not generally the reality. Yeah, these things get, get broken up. Pieced out. So 2,000 of this gentleman's collection was stolen without him knowing? He had no idea. They were in a basement, and allegedly there were some people working on the house for a period of time, and they stole some comics and sold them to local comic shops. The books got out into the marketplace and became very collectible as being high-grade copies of the Golden Age books, unbeknownst to the family. And other collectors had no idea where this collection came from. They just migrated into the collectible. This wasn't pedigree status yet. These were just out in the market, and people were feeding frenzy. They're like, high-grade comic books just came out. we got to get them all. Exactly. And the books were eventually brought to market by Heritage, which is a huge auction house. And Lon Allen was the histor or the comic history director there who of acquisitions or whatever role he played. And he met the family and recognized the letter D on the comics and found the rest of the collection. 11,000 more books. Okay, This collection spanned from about 1939 to 1955. So when Heritage Auctions was contacted by this gentleman to look at this larger collection... You're telling me that the few copies they handled, they were so renowned that upon arrival, they just were able to correlate the two and know that this was part of the whole thing? Yes, that's exactly it. Lon Allen recognized this, and the son, since the original owner passed away now, the son has the books. He contacted Heritage Auctions, okay? And like you said, they went over there. He recognized the D on here, and that's what makes it so special. He connected one with the other. Those 2,000 were part of a much larger group. So now that we know the story, these 11,000 books all went to auction. Okay, no reserve auction in 2006 for Heritage. So we had a huge spill out of this entire collection, which now has been dispersed. And like we mentioned, it's the second largest Golden Age collection behind the Mile High collection. And it's some of the highest graded copies of some of these books. Now, the paper quality isn't the highest for all these books because there were some issues with moisture because of where it was stored. But the grades are still really high. It actually says on here, aside from the number two saying it's a devil cover in the last issue, because it's only one of two, it says here, Davis Crippen, and then parentheses, D copy. 
It's recognized in two different ways. With a certificate. Thank you for showing this. What cool pieces of comic history. And you're holding a number one that is an 8.5. I've always been a big fan of this book. Didn't think it was going to ever get a copy of an 8.5, especially with the striking image of the skull and the crimson red hood and then the yellow behind it. That's just classic gold. And I love it. And I love this next segment because it's going to be viewer comments. That's right. Your comments. Please comment down below. Let us know what you think about Pedigrees, this video. It'll enter you to win a giveaway. And today's giveaway is actually this issue of Spider-Verse issue number one. This is the Patrick Brown 1 in 25 variant. It's hot. It's gorgeous. And it could be yours. All right. So the first comment here is this one's kind of a doozy. Obviously, we don't condone violence on the show, but we were chatting about a sensitive subject the last time you were on, which was stolen comics. And we asked if you had any experiences or knew any stories, we'd love to hear about it in the comment section below. And boy, did we get one. So Vin, Joel one shared this. So my store got robbed entirely when I was in the hospital. About 5,000 comics. I live in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Before I reported it to the police, a friend informed me that he had seen an employee of mine outside the store after hours. Turns out these guys have a trap house. I asked a few party guys I know. I stalked the place for some time. Oh my gosh. This is crazy, <laughs> man. Long story short, I went on Facebook in a calling all cars kind of manner. My friend, an ex-soldier, showed up with an arsenal. Oh my goodness, dude. <laughs> Again, not condoning, just sharing. Yes. All registered, of course, these weapons. And a few more guys on top of that. I went to knock on the door. These morons left the door open in the garage. All my stuff was there. So we stole it all back. Except for a stack of 9.8 books. But I got all 5,000 silver, bronze, and copper books along with the variants. That's a lot of comics, man. And he actually replied to our comment, you know, telling him that we were happy he was able to get the books back. He said that it took him over three hours to pack up everything. So I just can't imagine this scene that he just has laid out for us with so many people. Bottom line, there's a lot of reasons not to steal. The main one is it's just wrong and unethical. But fair warning, you don't mess with comic people. You just don't want to mess with people. You just never know. And you sure as heck don't want to mess with jor over here. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. All right. We have Andrew Plant says, I was fortunate enough to meet Bernie Wrightson at Boston Comic Con in August 2016. I was shocked that he had no line and was able to walk right up to him and have him sign Swamp Thing number one. And I bought a couple of prints at the time. This is so cool. This is in reference to your story about your first like big comic book purchase as a child. But... Right here, it's like, oh my gosh, what was I doing in 2016 where I could have just walked up to Bernie and talked to him? You know, it's like, damn, regrets, you know? It really is because when you think about it, it used to be really easy. And right now, it's still pretty easy for a lot of creators. They don't, they don't all get the credit they deserve. So if you have any urge to see somebody, I just recommend not waiting. Just, yeah. just get, out the, go, get out the way, say hi, take a photo, just do something. Yeah, just give it a give it a shot. You never know. And in reference to your first purchase was actually a Bernie Wrightson story as well. Yeah, my first big purchase was the House of Secrets 92. And I remember it being really nice. For I mean, as nice as a 12, 13-year-old kid could grade, but it looked nice. And it had Bernie Wrightson's signature on the first page there. So it was extra special because I love Swamp Thing. I was excited to get that book, split it with a friend of mine, and uh, I'll never forget that moment. Yeah, we actually chatted about it on the bonus show, which we have been releasing a few months after the bonus shows airs on SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes because the cameras, once they shut off, the mics keep going on those audio-only platforms. Well, we then post it a few months later on YouTube so everyone can consume it, and you shared that recently. So I'll put the link if you haven't heard that story yet. It's really great. So let's chat about The Boy Who Had Seven. This is in reference to your story about your stolen comic books. He said, dude, guru, crazy man so to be honest are you glad they found it or is it creepy driving it now your car sorry that that happened bro he also said fbi was probably looking for the pieces of cerebro that jeff has been sneaking to xavier so in reference to your car being stolen how do you respond to that is it creepy driving it now i can't i don't think it's creepy at all it's it's got a i think they smoked in the car so i'm reminded every time i sit in there but every time I do sit in there, too, the seats are so slick from how they polished it. They the car feels, it. They, they detailed it. So the car is super clean. 
I, I'm keeping it clean. It hasn't been that clean for probably four to five years now. I mean, it's the cleanest I've seen that car in a long time. Just that smoke smell, man. It bugs me. Every time I, I breathe, I, I, I get reminded about the stupid incident. We got to get you some black ice in there. You know, that tree? That's exactly what's hanging in there. I have Is a black really? ice tree. <laughs> they put one in there, and it's not enough. That's funny you said that, because I never would buy black ice. Dude, it smells really hanging. good, doesn't it? I don't know. I just still smell the small the, the smoke, and it's that's funny that you said black ice. Uh, it's came out of nowhere. Okay, well, we're chatting about this right now because we have an update to this story. So let's refresh anyone who hasn't heard the story yet. You had comic books stolen out of a car that was actually stolen. Your car was stolen. The comics were in the car, and there was like eight to ten books. Then you immediately sent out to the ether. We made a freaking podcast about it. You contacted multiple stores. Like, there's not that many comic book stores in the area in our state. So you reached out to as many as you could. You gave them the list. The stores wrote the comic books down. And, you know, we we never know. Maybe they'll turn up. We hope. Comic Karma, right? We prayed to Thor. But this is a segment not about how you got some of them back as a success story. Because that's great. And we'll, we'll talk about that. This is a segment about how a freaking comic book store failed you. Failed. Failed. We're not shouting out any store. We are not sending hate anywhere. We deleted the comment uh, that, that, that pointed the, to the direction of the store. We are going to do right by everybody, but we are definitely going to talk about this because this is real. This happened, and this happened to you, and you need to talk about it, man. So... Like you said, it's, it's super frustrating because I did my part. I called all the shops. I called half-price bookstores and let everybody know these are the comics. I had people, I emailed everybody, okay? Those who want information and wanted to write it down, I told them so they would write and they were writing it down, okay? I told everybody that I, like within a 30 to 40 mile radius. Okay? How many times did you wait, like communicating what you need to have communicated to the person on the other end and then to go, okay, hold on. Let me stop and let me write it down. How many? They all they all took a moment with me. Right? Every they took single the, one. Yeah, because if you're like, oh yeah, just tell me. I'm gonna remember these 12 comics. Right. No one's gonna you're not gonna believe them. Right. So they took the time, they stopped, they wrote them down because they don't want to buy stolen stuff. I but absolutely s- asked them if you want me to send you an email. Okay. And they said yes, just send me an email with the list. Great. And if they didn't want an email and they wanted to write it down, I told them what the books were. Okay. And there was only one, maybe two people who wanted to just write it down, and really just one. And I took the time to tell him what they are, and he's writing them down. And I was like, okay, great. I did my part. If they show up, they'll show up. Because that's what we thought, talked about on the show. It's not easy to move comics. They're going to end up somewhere. I mean, you heard it right here from Vin Jorel. I mean, that was the first thing he did. It was put the feelers out, figure out where they were, and he found out in a day. You wanted to do the same thing. And that's exactly what we did. Okay, I let everybody in all the shops know. I let the community know. And it was the community who communicated back to me that my books were at a shop. This shop I spoke to who was handwriting down the the books. Okay, I spoke to this person only to find out that they bought the books. They sold half the books already. Okay, and... In under a week's time. In Gotta under move a week's them time. quick. Yeah. You know? And so he told me, hey, oh, yeah, yeah, those are your books. I called him. I, I called him. Okay. So someone told me in the comment section, I bought a book, and this book also had three other books that were on your list. Okay. Is this your book? And I, like, I spoke to him. The, uh, the um, person in the, community in the community who communi- this, communicated this to you. I said, oh, you. my God, thank Shout you for out. letting me know. I will call the shop and verify. I called the shop. And sure enough. I explain explain them the books here. Hey, did you get some books coming in? Because you and I spoke. And I was like, this was the list. He's like, oh, oh, I guess I didn't write down the list. Okay. Well, you asked for the list and I read it to you. And then I asked, well, do you have surveillance cameras? It's like, no, no, I don't have surveillance. Well, can you describe who bought? No, no. So they, I get so much stuff sold to me. I, I can't remember everybody. I just can't. Okay. But I remember I bought them super cheap. Sold them for way too cheap, too. And I'm just like, you know, I'm holding it all together because I'm just trying to get as much information from this guy as possible. These people stole your car, man. This is a lot bigger than just the comic books in there. Exactly. The, the whole car was taken. I got the car back. But again, like we said, I, you know the books are going to end up somewhere. They have to end up somewhere. You're not just going to, they're not going to just be held. These guys are just going to try to make money as fast as possible. 
but I got let down by this comic shop because they didn't do their part. So after I had that conversation and verified, he told me that those were my books. They had the sticker from the comic shop that I bought them from still on there. Okay, he rebagged and boarded them, sold them too cheap, probably just to get them out as fast as possible. And then I then confirmed with the person who told me originally that the, sh the books were at the shop. And I said, thank you. Please keep that book. I appreciate you letting me know. Okay, don't worry about it. I don't care. You keep that book. Thank you for you know, letting me know. That's a cool thing to do. And so then I was like, dude, this guy doesn't have any cameras. He's only got an alarm system. And then the guy writes back to me, hey, man, thank you for letting me keep the book. I hope you can figure it out through the security system or the cameras that are at the store. I was like, what? So I get this guy's information, call him. He's like, are you telling me that there's security cameras at this store? Because I was told there wasn't. He's like, yeah, I believe so. So I go check Google Earth, all right, and get like images of his property so I can like kind of do that 3D walk around. And there's signs on the exterior of his building saying video surveillance. This property is under video surveillance. So I was like, there's video cameras. What, why would you not tell me that? Some shady stuff. It's some shady stuff. So I call the police and I'm doing all the legwork. Like I feel like the police are just kind of doing their steps because it's been, it's just been a process. Okay. And you got your car back. so Yeah, and they have their process. And then I don't, I, I'm just like, this is the only thing I have to worry about, right? So right. I can go like wherever I want, knocking down doors and whatever. So for them, it's just another case. And they're going through their steps. So I was supposed to actually meet the police at the comic shop because I was going over there. Okay, I called them and told them I was going to come in about a week and a half to grab the books. And after I heard he had security cameras, I was like, I'm coming the next day. I didn't tell him. I just showed up. Surprise. Yeah, Surprise. And I walk in the shop. It's a nice looking shop. Surprise. Give me my damn books. Yeah, exactly. All of them. And you, you just can't remember. Anyways, it's frustrating, man. So I go in there. It's and, real. I appreciate you sharing it, man. Yeah, I go in there. I meet the guy. Like I said, it's a nice looking shop. And uh, I start talking to him. And the guy's just a kind of a space cadet. You know, like I'm trying to him. He's just kind of all over the place. I haven't told him who I am yet. What else is he supposed to do? Well, oh, I, yeah. I stole your books. Well, no, he doesn't know who I am yet. He's just, I'm just trying to get a feel for the guy oh. as a normal person. Oh, okay. This okay, is before, you, before, before he realized who you were. Oh, yeah. He comes in. He's like, oh, hey, what's up? Hey, how you doing, man? Da, 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 da. Just 100 miles per hour. And just like, you know, I don't know. Just that was just him. Okay. I was like, okay. Maybe he just, he didn't write it down because he's just that kind of. I don't know, space cadet kind of guy, like I mentioned, just not paying not thinking attention, about not thinking about it. Like, they're not going to show up in my shop. I'm not going to write it down, whatever. Yeah, unlikely. I, I, that can't be the case. Yeah, and by the end of it, I was like, okay, I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, all right? But then afterwards, when I went home and thought about it more and more and all the stuff that, like, he didn't do and all the stuff that he did do, I just, I just kept getting more frustrated and angry about it, and I just couldn't let it go again. And I'm just like, man, this guy really did screw me and he, like, screwed the community because he's buying this stuff. And it's clear as day. Like, when someone shows up to you with eight to ten key books. With okay, one of them being Golden Age? One of them being Golden Just Age. Boop. Yeah, all key books. Price stickers on them from another you store. You see JoJo comics all the time, right? Yeah. Just like you're just in Renton, you know, just driving around. Kid a local comic shop. Oh, there's a JoJo on the wall. I'll take that. Yeah, and then, like, not only that, buy them for super cheap. So you can okay. sell them for super cheap. So you can sell them for super cheap. Like that's those aren't red flags to you, or something's going on, and not to at least make a mental note of who the person is. He done you wrong, man. He done you wrong. There's there's no Fail way me. we we've chatted about this a little bit prior to the mic because we're trying to figure out like how how did this happen by mistake? Like give everyone the benefit of the doubt. You know, it's it's just comic books. But when it comes down to it, we were talking about Pawn Stars earlier on the show, and if this was a pawn shop that accidentally bought something that was stolen and then sold it, the pawn shop is the one responsible. It, the, the owner who had the theft is not responsible. It's the people in between who bought the stolen merchandise. They are responsible. That's why there's laws in place to protect pawn shops and, and the consumers. You have to go by like different rules. You hear about like, yo, you can't sell it for so many days after the fact. That's to be claimed. There's all these reminders. And because there's so many rules, largely across the country, pawn shops can't even operate. And the ones that can, they're heavily you know, monitored and there's a lot of rules they got to follow. It's not an easy business. This person essentially is doing a service like a pawn shop would and abandoned all responsibilities. And I'll tell you one thing. It's if it happened, it happened. You got books back. Great. But if it happened one time because he made this mistake, I guarantee it's happened before. And it's probably happened more than once.
Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm sure people know this is the guy I can sell to. Right. Okay. I mean, it just has to be. I don't know if it has to be, but it just I, I'm gonna, feel right. I'm going to cheer you up right now. We're going we're gonna to cheer the cheer guru up. I, I know. Cheer I know. You're up. angry. It's going to be better. It's going to be better. Okay. Right. This is what we're going to do. Right. We're going to open up. I have a gift for you. I have a gift for Russ. And I also have a couple books for me. We're going to do a CGC unboxing right now. We're going to cheer you up. This is stuff that I got graded. Um, you guys have been so dope over this last year being awesome members of the team. So I got you guys some gifts. And I figured I'll give it to you right now because it came in from the CGC. Okay. All right. So this is what I got. I have four comic books here. Two are for me. One is for you. And one is for Russ. Marvel Comics 1000. I got this signed for you by Humberto Ramos. It's graded at 8.5. It's a D23. Dude, thank you, man. Expo, one per store, retailer incentive. So I thought that would be a dope gift for you. I got Russ one as well. This one came back in an 8.0. I gave you the small bump because you let me bunk with you in New York, and I appreciate you for doing that. Different beds, but you saved me a lot of money and made it possible for me to go, so thank you. So my homie Russ is getting a copy as well. I'll give that to him when he comes back. He's actually in Chicago right now. And then I have a couple comic books that I sent for myself. I have my copy. I'm keeping the 9-0. All right. That's pretty cool. I figured it'd be good. Nice for the set. But I'll put that back here. I also have this gorgeous sketch variant at 9-4, red signature signed by Humberto Ramos. That's pretty amazing. Did I tell you how much of a hardship that theft was for me, man? I mean, I really need a little bit more to... Really get over that hump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Oh, man. Look at this book, dude. Look at that book. All right, Comic Fam, I'm holding a sketch variant. I haven't seen it since, you know, earlier this year when I sent it in. It was awesome. When I brought this to the CGC table, they got so excited to see it. They're like, we've only seen one of them. Oh, and you got your signed. Very cool. So um, it was a privilege. Um, I'm not, never going to sell it. You know, this is just one of those ones where it's like I had an opportunity. It happened. And I'm never going to let it go. So here it is. Comic Fam. Um, let me know what you think about these uh, D23 variants. I think they're pretty cool. Um, I think that the room looks like uh, Steven from Steven's room from Gem Mint. It has that same like posters on the wall. So he says, oh, it's a Gempire. It's a variant of the Gempire. An homage. Gempire, I like that. Okay, let's move on to the next section here because we have another kind of unboxing to do. This was amazing. You have to walk me through how the hell you made this happen because you got original Kirby art. And it just doesn't make sense. You didn't pay enough for this. It's an eBay sale. So I know that you're not going to care about how much we talk about, like how much you spent on it. Because, dude, how I just, I'm lost for words. This is sitting in front of me. Monsters, issues number 12. This is Monsters on the Prowl 12, a book from 1971. It's got Jack Kirby pencils and Marie Severin alterations to it. I just picked up a Jack Kirby monster cover for like a ridiculous price. And I, and I'm still floored at it. And I keep trying to understand how it happened. Okay. Crazy. But I paid 2700 bucks for it. 2700 bucks for original Jack Kirby. Right. Which is just crazy to me. Look at those Kirby hands, dude. It's so cool. And Marie Severin, she, she helped a lot, which is I think also makes it pretty damn cool, too. Yeah. It's just amazing when I get it in hand. I mean, it was already cool on the computer. But when I get to hold it and actually look at it and think about the history of it, I just can't help but geek out on it. Let's geek out on it. All right, just start going through everything on here that we're excited about because there's a lot of minute details that excite us as collectors. So we're looking at this huge mummy just walking down the aisle of what looks like a tomb. But it could be a museum because you have all these people in clothing and like day-to-day -day wear. So I'm thinking this is more like a really nice museum or maybe in some type of a historical site. And they're just people checking out the pharaohs and the big tombs. And this living mummy, okay, called Gomdula, comes marching down your path, stomping with his big old marshmallowy Kirby hand feet and these bandages. He's like literally, it almost looked like he's about to jump off the page with that foot the way it's extended. You're right. With the perspective this has, yeah, it's, it's just exactly that, what it's that like. That Kirby action shot, man. Yeah, it's it's amazing. And you feel the weight of the character, the motion, the fear of it. And you can only imagine, like, this, what, 40-foot creature coming at you. Right. If you look at this really closely, you can really see the the detail of what has happened with this page. You get a little bit of the history with all the different defects, but also things they did to manufacture this cover. 
a lot of the times there's a lot of cut and pasting. So they had the word bubbles. And you could tell that if you look carefully here, that a word bubble was here at one point, but they changed their mind. How can you tell? Because the printed version actually has the word bubble on the far right. So it should be right over this foot. And you could tell that maybe it was tried here first, and but the final was to the right corner. And you can see an edge, a little piece of the bubble right in the corner. A little, it's in white with a pen. So you'll see corrections. So you'll see white ink and, or excuse me, like white areas, white it out, literally white it out. Yeah, and black like ink's out. coming over. Because the copy machines aren't going to pick this stuff up. So you can see all the history behind it of what's happened with this page. It's like OG Photoshop, just layers on layers. Exactly. And that's just kind of how it was built. I mean, it was monster taped, put together. Yeah, it's like it got texture. You can feel it. You know, it's it's in plastic, so it's okay to touch. But you can feel the different levels of the comic move because there's different layers. And you also see corrections and pieces that are even missing because over time, some of these fell off. I mean, this is like glued together. It wasn't made to last. It was made to make the comic the first the first time and really only that. And then tossed away. That, that, that's what it was for. Unfortunately, a lot of his work in particular was kind of just tossed away, given away. You know, he, he didn't get a lot of it back, unfortunately. And that was the history for artwork. It just, it came, it went, it wasn't held on. So that keeps the scarcity level at a high for these older pages and covers. And if you look in the back, there is a stamp of authenticity that it was approved on March 2nd, 1971, and then initialed. Like you would assume, this has everything to prove its authenticity. Through time, it did have some wear. You have seen some moisture damage to it as well, but nothing severe. This, this piece really does just stand out and pop and hopefully get it framed and hang it somewhere, if my wife would let me. Ker- Kirby was known to be able to just like start anywhere on the page. And I like to think that he drew maybe like one of the limbs first and then was like, you know what? Let's just have this leg protruding almost off the page. We'll draw that next. And then he's like, oh, let's work on the Pharaoh right now. And he would just go all over the page. His brain worked like that. He's such a fascinating gentleman. And you know what? Marie Severin helped out a lot. She did a lot of the cleanup work. It's like the comics, you know, they come in, but like Stan with text, he would do a lot of added excitement to kind of make it more vibrant, you know, get it a little bit more, more pop, a little bit more flair. Well, the art, Marie Severin did a lot of that for different Marvel covers and, and she like added the spice. She's like a little bit of the spice on the cover. She changed some things and it's kind of a combination of both of them working together. Yeah. She, she was a master um, at her craft and she's was around a very long time, a very accomplished artist and colorist for EC at one point. And then through the 50s of Marvel as well. There's actually another comic book I want to mention that Marie Severin helped make a little bit more smooth, a little bit more eye appeal, a little bit more of that spice that I described. And we're talking about Hulk Annual Number 1. You know this cover well. We all know this cover. Hulk is literally holding up his title, The Hulk. His back is breaking. Rocks are crumbling from the Hulk title. There's fire in the background. This is a very classic cover. But it was not done perfectly by Jim, at least to Marvel standards. Yeah, I chatted with Jim about this, and he described it like this. He thought that the Hulk is a monster, which he is. He also thought that if the Hulk is, like, holding his whole title up, this guy would just be, like, you know, he's it's heavy, and he's so much strength is needed, and it's probably wearing him out, and he's got, he already looks ugly, right? So he's got to look stressed, and his face needs to look scrunchy, and that's what he drew. He drew a scary-looking Hulk Face, which is kind of what you would expect, right? But Marvel thought, eh, it's a little too ugly. So Marie Severin remastered the face, gave Bruce as the Hulk more of a clean look. And that's what actually was published. So you have Starenko's cover with a different face. And I'm bringing that up today because there is a foreign comic book that I am hunting for before January, and I hope to get it because... When this came out on the stands with the Marie Severin alteration, well, or enhancement would probably be a better way to say to some collectors. Let us know in the comment section below, which face do you like better? I'm curious to know. Personally, I'm a Starenko diehard, so I'm looking for an original piece. And what's crazy is that foreign countries that reprinted this comic book, they included Starenko's original face. So I'm now shopping different foreign comics for my favorite cover with the original face specifically. 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it, but there's one that has more rocks on the cover. They altered the covers. So there literally are different things that would make me want one cover over the other. And the Finnish version has more rocks. It has a Steranko face. And I'm after it so hard. I hope you can find it at some point, man. I don't know how hard it is to find. I can see why you'd want Steranko's. I mean, I don't like the... F- I think Marie Severin crushed this face. She did, man. But this dude, so it's good. Steranko. But Steranko. For the purity of it, and you just want that Steranko the way it should have been. I need that sexy Steranko signature on there, man. I yeah. got to grade it. It's going to be so dope. And you know what? I'm very proud to say that post our foreign comic book podcast and the releases that we've done and talking about it more, I have made some really cool friends. Shout out Matthew Royball. And he actually hooked me up with somebody in freaking Greece because I'm looking for a comic book to talk about on the show, but it was only released in Greece this particular version, and he found me someone in Greece, and I freaking bought it from him. So I have a comic from Greece being shipped to me right now, and Matthew's also hunting me down this version. So hopefully I have some more updates to to tell the community. But now that we're on the foreign comic subject, let's chat about some foreign comics that have hit the market recently that are just this like some of the biggest surprises to me in comic book sales this year. Absolutely. And we're going to start off right away with uh, our favorite barbarian, yeah. Conan. We're talking about La Rena Costa Negra. Have you ever heard about this? I have never heard about this until you told me like two hours ago. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get into this. And what's fun is that the reason why we're bringing this up today is because one has hit eBay. I'm going to get into the history of this comic book on another day because I I started to dive into it. I hit up Matthew. He messaged me a whole article on it, and that led me to other comic books because the history of this was actually contained in other Savage Tales Conan comic books in like the editorial sections. So there's not just collector's information. There's actually Marvel published information, and I want to just... I want to get it all. I want to know it all and then bring it to the community. But what I will tell you is that back in 1952, there was a Mexican publication company that released an unauthorized, it's like an unofficial Conan the Barbarian story. But obviously this is a reprinted story form because Conan comes from books from the past, Robert E. Howard. But this particular run debuted in the 50s over the course of a handful of comic books, and it featured Conan the Barbarian inside. Now, these were adaptations of the originals with changes. There was a handful of changes as comic books. They, they included Vikings when Vikings weren't in this original story and a handful of other things. Again, we'll dive into the more specifics another time. But the reality is, is that these exist. They're from the 50s, and they predate Marvel's Conan tale by years and years. And Roy Thomas knew about this at the time that they were writing Conan in the 70s. So I'm excited to dive into the history and like how people have found this and how it's become such a renowned issue of Conan. Because if you include this comic book in the Howard Collection goal for those diehard Conan collectors, this right here isn't just a real first appearance. This would be the first appearance in comic book form because it's so old. It literally says Conan on one of the covers. He's got blonde hair, a little different, but it's him. One has hit the market. So it's numbered issues 8, 9, 10, and 11. Okay? Like you said, 1952. It's on eBay. And there's a $12,000 bid on it already. Yeah. Hyperscarce Ghost Comics. Matthew said that this is the rarest Mexican foreign comic that he knows of. And it's one that so many people are after. There are Conan completionists. There's Conan diehards. They, want, they know them. The people that know this comic, they've been after it for a really long time. And I'm just finding out about it now because I've opened this, this black hole. I started just going into it, Neil deGrasse Tyson style of just foreign comic books. And I'm, all, I'm deep into it. I just want so many. So if you had to have a foreign comic right now, would you either have these Conans or would you have your El Sorprendente Hombre Araña? <laughs> oh my goodness. El Sorprendente Hombre Araña. Issue number 128. That's a tough one, dude. For one, the Conan books are like, they don't exist. They're so scarce. They're from the 50s. So obviously that's like, you got to go for those ones. They're they're just too too valuable and too awesome. But this El Sorprendente book, issue 128, it is an out of canon drawn in Mexico by the famous artist Jose Duran. And it features a two second cutaway sequence that then takes place over the whole comic book of Peter Parker daydreaming about marrying Gwen Stacy. Now this 
is a daydream. Some people say it's an alternate reality, that it's a, that like when Stacy's alive in this run, or that's just like a flashback. This happened in the run. No, no, it's none of those things. This is just a daydream. But collectors have now made this key worthy because it's Gwen Stacy and it shows the marriage. This book hit eBay a couple times this year. The first time it hit eBay, it sold for a few hundred dollars. People were scoffing when it hit four to 500. Then we saw another hit eBay a few months later. I think it hit around six to 800, if I recall correctly. Well, late November, we saw another copy hit eBay. $2,200 sale. First print. Check out those gains, dude. The foreign comic market is strong. There are people getting into it. People are hunting it. We're going to have some more set collectors on their way soon. I don't know how you can't jump in, right? I mean, the possibilities of hitting a winner right now with a foreign comic is huge because it's unestablished and you can get in for so cheap because a lot of people aren't that aware of it to even know how to price it. Like, I wouldn't know how to price a foreign comic right now. I would just buy it for something reasonable and hope that I got something special and something cool because it's another version of a key book or something along those lines. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. We're going to keep following the foreign market because it is popping every other day. There's new stuff happening, and I'm excited to report on it for the community. Let me know what you think about these foreign comics in the comment section below. Have you hunted for any? Did you find any? We'd love to hear from you. We also would love to hear your opinions about this next story. I actually have a conversation with Ryan happening next week about Watchmen, about how much I love this show, how I think it's incredibly underrated and probably the best show on television that's come out all year best comic book adaptation type of show. And it's not even an adaptation, but I'm going to save that for another day. There has been a release from HBO this past week, though, that is just so funny. And it's just, it's got me loving this show. I don't even know if this is like worth bringing up, but I feel like it's kind of our duty to when there's something like deep comic book cut or something super strange that happens. I think it's good conversation. And we're talking about Dr. Manhattan and we're talking about his Manhattan. (laughs) I got you there, dude. You laugh. That's authentic. Uh, All right. Watchmen HBO, according to CBR, and you can see this um, yeah. on HBO's site here. HBO releases. Wait, wait, wait. Before we get into this, now I want you guys to know, if you're looking for a DIY project, okay, this time of the year. <laughs> a DIY project. All right. This isn't going to be a Christmas <laughs> ornament idea. All right. I know it's the time of the year it is. We're not getting into anything like that. And All we right. talked about censorship last week. We're not a kid's show. We're going to talk about the Dr. Manhattan vibrator on Watchmen. Because HBO released the specs of, of the prototype. <laughs> yeah, we saw it on the show, okay? Oh, my goodness. So it appeared on the show, but they felt that they needed to throw out a spec sheet. Lori okay? Blake, okay, she had a long romantic relationship with Dr. Manhattan. It's been years. She thinks he's just left her. Decades have gone by, but she misses him. Lori Blake has the Excalibur, okay? And this is a one-to-one, a scale inch by inch replica of Dr. Manhattan. And they show it on screen. Yeah. And we're not talking inch, but we're talking about <laughs> many inches here. Well, actually let's get into specifics because they, okay. HBO has released the actual numbers to the prototype. Okay. So let's, let's read through this. Um, so on this checklist, aside from what we're looking at is like the schematics, you know, those shirts that are like the millennium Falcon yes. and like all the different parts of it. And it says like, this is the cockpit and this is this, and this is the, <laughs> this is the mission <laughs> blasters and all blah, 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 blah. You just say cockpit I don't freaking know, man. Star Wars stuff. Well, you know, this <laughs> looks like one of those shirts only you wouldn't want to wear the shirt actually. Okay. Real question. Would you wear this shirt? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't wear this shirt because you got a side view of this mechanism that is a replica of Dr. Manhattan. It says it it contains plastic, paint, metal, lithium, because it's energized and actually says here it, it is energized. And yeah, we have the various detachable pieces that show that like this is what it would look like from the top view, from the bottom view. But this is where it gets interesting. We have the the scale dimensions. Shout out to the inspector D. It says inspected by D, but the dimensions are 13 inches by four inches. Dr. Manhattan, you remember back in Fantastic Four, there was a joke that Marvel included in the movie, Mr. Fantastic. There was a joke about him being able to expand any part of his body. Well, we know that Dr. Manhattan can grow to be like larger than giant man. Like this guy can get so large. I have a feeling that he controls every limb of his body like Mr. Fantastic. And I think this is the proof. Jeff, what do you have to say about this? Be honest. Would you wear this as a shirt? 
I don't see myself wearing this as a shirt. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. So no, uh, I think this is hilarious that they put out a schematic. I really, I really do, especially to scale. <laughs> This is crazy, it's dude. So good. Um, so yeah, Watchmen just keeps giving us more hits. Man. <laughs> you, the show just keeps. <laughs> the show keeps giving us more hits. Yeah, just yeah. every week, there's just more information about the story that I didn't know I wanted to know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what is going on, comic fam? Hit the subscribe button. We talk a lot about comic books and other things. And <laughs> we actually have a giveaway today. Comment down below. We um, have two winners from last week's giveaway. We're actually going to be sending out two copies of Show Zen, the Comic Tom 101 exclusive. We're sending one out to Keystone Colonies Beekeeping Co. Thanks for commenting. And then we also have another winner, Casey Snipes, who I think has won another giveaway in the past. But you know what? It's random. So we're sending it to you. Congratulations, winners. Remember, guys, we have less than a week left to sign up for our mystery mail call and get your Metal Shark bro. That's right. Support the show. And we'll send you some comic books every month. And one of those comics is a copy of Scout Comics, the Comic Tom exclusive of Metal Shark Bro. Also, big thank you to Kevin Esslinger Art, who is going to supply every member of a copy of, I think, my favorite print of the year. This is a little Baby Yoda, right? Baby Yoda, signed and numbered on the back. Take a look at it. It's not, it's signed and numbered in limited edition, and everyone gets this gorgeous print. Go over to kevinesslinger.com. Use code TOM101 to get a buy one, get three prints free. It's a killer deal over there. Your help supporting another member of our team. And don't forget to continue listening on our audio platforms only. On Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. We appreciate your time today, comic fam. You're the best community in the world. And as always, geek responsibly. We'll see you next week. Enough said.